Sometimes life deals you lemons. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use releasing to turn all of that into sweet, sweet lemonade. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, the simple and easy way to full self-realization. So if you want to have total control of your mind and have happiness and abundance in your life, you've come to the right place. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. And if you find this video helpful, make sure to hit like and share this video with others so we can spread the goodness that comes through quiet and quieting your mind. Now, what we're going to take a look at today is how to use releasing, how to use this method that we practice here on this channel to deal with life's problems. You know, because inevitably we have curveballs that get thrown our way. Things don't turn out the way that we expect. And sometimes it may seem like a complete disaster. So in these moments, how do you deal with that? How do you use releasing to not only feel better in these moments, but also have these moments turn around and actually go your way? Now, these types of challenges, they could be relationship challenges, they could be you know, financial setbacks, things like that. And just drawing from my own experiences, I've been through all of it. And I've used releasing to come through all of these challenges with flying colors. Like relationship-wise, I remember it was about 10 years ago. I was in a relationship with a girl. We were together for about two years. And it was a pretty tumultuous relationship. In that span of about two years, we broke up and got together at least a dozen times. And I remember one particular time, I was at a retreat. We were in uh, Lake Tahoe uh, doing a seven day retreat on releasing. And I got a message from her. It's over, I don't wanna see you again. And I just sat there and all of these heavy feelings came up. Like loneliness, regret, feeling bad about myself, feeling like I'm such a loser. And I'm just sitting here with these terrible, terrible feelings. And my mind's calculating, all right? How do I change this? How do I fix this relationship? And it's like wanting to jump into action, all right? Oh, call her, you know, go talk to her, right? Sort this thing out, go fix this thing. But as I'm sitting at the retreat, right? I've been doing a lot of releasing. I'm in a much quieter space. So, I'm not swept up away with the mind so much in that moment. I have a bit of clarity and I'm observing what's going on in the moment. And I realize my motivation for getting back into this relationship, it wasn't even so much about her or the relationship itself that you know, I was wanting to recapture. My main motivation in that moment to go fix things was to get away from the deep, heavy feelings I was experiencing in the moment. It's like, I feel so bad. I just want to fix things so I don't have to feel so bad anymore. All right? And that was my motivation. I saw that. It's like, wait a minute. If I act off of that, right, and go and try to fix a relationship, that's not going to lead to anything good. Right? At the very least, it's just going to repeat the same cycle over and over and over again. Because all I'm doing is I'm running away from my feelings. So I sat down and I did a bunch of releasing exercises because I had a mission in that moment, right? I'm gonna to get totally clear. I'm not gonna make any decisions yet about what to do, whether to get back in it or just leave it. What I'm gonna do first is get completely imperturbable. I'm gonna let go of all of my wants and feelings in both directions, right? The, the feelings and desires to have, right? My attachments to being in this relationship, but also my feelings and desires of, you know, 
wanting to get away from this, you know, this relationship. Because I saw I had a bunch of resistance to it at the same time, right? It's like this pushing and pulling effect, you know, that was going on. And I said, I'm just going to release all of that stuff, release all of my attachments, all of my aversions. And once I'm clear, right, once, you know, I really feel truly like I could be in it and I can leave it. And it's okay either way. I feel just as calm and centered and happy with either decision. At that point, in that place of clarity, then I'll decide. So that's what I did. I let all of those attachments and aversions go. And in that clarity, I thought, well, what do I want to do in this relationship? And I said, well, yeah, let's go ahead and get back. And and then I called her up, we had a conversation, and it was easy. We got back together and we had a good time for a little while. And eventually, you know, through clarity, I realized, you know, this isn't the greatest relationship. It's not the best between both of us. You know, we're different people. So, you know, we could easily now move our separate ways, you know, without any hard feelings and such. So doing the releasing, it just gave me all the options and clarity and also, you know, the presence and clarity inside to just do whatever I want and be in a place where I didn't have a problem at all, where it was really my decision. I could have it. I could not have it. And acting on that decision was easy. So once I had that clarity, I could have exactly what I wanted as I decided in that moment. Now, in my experience also, when I've had other setbacks, like financially, this is something that I've been experiencing a lot since I've been doing trading the last couple of years, where I set up a trade and in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to make $5,000 off of this trade. And I get into the trade. It doesn't work as I expect. Instead of making 5,000, I end up losing 5,000. And guess what? The same feeling comes in. It's like regret. What did I just do? The feeling of loss of that money, you know, that idea of what I just lost monetarily just had this sinking feeling. And again, the mind starts calculating. Oh, how do I fix this? I need to fix it right away. Now in trading, this is a common phenomena. In fact, they even have a term for it. They call it revenge trading. Like when you mess up, you lose a bunch of money. There's this reaction that people typically make of, oh, I need to go right back in there and fix it. And inevitably what happens when you do that is, you know, you're making a rash decision, you're being reactive and you go back in and you make a worse mistake. So maybe you lost $5,000, but now you're down 10,000. And then you're saying they're going, Oh, now I'm really stepped in it. I try to fix it again. And then you compound that mistake over and over until you're just like, ah, screw the whole thing. I don't want to do this anymore. Now, again, in that moment, like when you make a mistake and you like, you have a big financial loss, it's not so much the money. That's the real problem. In that moment, there's just this sinking feeling, this horrible feeling inside that you're sitting there here having to live with. And in that mind, it's looking for a way to make that feeling go away. Well, if I could just get that money back, right, then that will take care of this terrible feeling that I have inside. And that's basically our main motivation is running away from our feelings that we don't like that are sitting inside of us. But here's the thing about these feelings. And this is something that we all inevitably realize we learn through this process of using the method of releasing is that the feelings that get stirred up when something doesn't go our way, right? When we have a big catastrophe in our life, 
those feelings aren't necessarily coming from that situation. Those feelings just didn't come out of nowhere, right? Just appear because that situation happened. Most of us, we start to realize that these feelings, these regret, fear, you know, right? And so on, that they were inside of us already, buried deep down. And what happened is that this situation, you know, whatever event happened that caused some sort of loss in our life, it stirred up a feeling that was already inside of us. And this is something that Lester Levinson, the spiritual master whose work we practice here on this channel, he pointed out that when you have a big loss in your life, he said, use every down as an up. Because, you know, as we're releasing, a lot of times, you know, we're not facing big problems. You know, we're using the method to bring up certain feelings that are maybe mildly uncomfortable, and we could see it and go, oh, okay, I could let that go. But when something big hits us and we have a heavy feeling, a lot of times, either we avoid releasing, we follow that mind, and you know, the mind is looking for a way to escape the feeling by taking some sort of reactive, rash action, or we find it difficult to deal with these feelings. We find it difficult to release on them. And I'm going to show you how to make that process simple. So, you know, if something bad happens to you and you, and you obviously feel these horrible, horrible feelings, how you can just very simply and easily just start releasing them and getting bigger than them and getting bigger to the point where you can then finally just dig up the whole thing and let the whole thing go. And why Lester said that you should use every down as an up, because any time these bad things happen to us and they stir up such a heavy feeling, it's an opportunity. Because like I said, these feelings didn't come out of nowhere. They were inside of us already. And so when this thing happens, it triggers a feeling that comes up now. Now we have a choice. We could either try to run away from it, avoid it, escape it, or try to push it back down. <laughs> you know, sometimes this is what we end up doing. Like, you know how they say time heals all wounds? That's not true. When we, like, say, have a bad breakup, and it might take us six months or a year to get over it, right, that, to heal those wounds. Basically, in that six-month period, usually, we're just suppressing, suppressing, pushing all those bad feelings back down to, into the subconscious, where we don't feel them anymore. We pretend that they're not there. We forget about them. And then we go, okay, I'm good. Now, now I can go into another relationship. But those feelings are still inside. And guess what? Because they're inside, they're like a magnet that pulls these horrible, you know, challenging situations in our lives at us to bring them back up again. And this is going to happen again and again and again until the feelings are released. So that's why Lester said, this is a perfect opportunity to just release the whole thing, get rid of all that negativity, and guess what? Those bad situations don't happen anymore after that. Now, it might sound a little bit far out, but this is something that's provable. So let's play with this a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to start releasing, even when you don't feel like you can, right? Like when you're right in the middle of just something horrible or heavy in your life. All right? So think about something that is a problem. All right? Maybe you have a big problem. But maybe not. Maybe you just have a little bit of a problem. It'll work all the same. All right, think about a problem that you have in your life. Or maybe you think about something that you're afraid might happen to you. Now, as you think about it, 
just put your attention toward your stomach or chest area. And this will just help you feel the feelings that get stirred up there, because that's usually where we feel them, right? Like we have these terms like, I get a pit in my stomach, or I have a heavy heart, right? Because that's where we kind of feel it. We just feel this ugh, inside of us when something bad happens. So as you're thinking about this, just notice you feel this ugh, kind of in your stomach or chest area. Now notice there's a tendency in the mind to want to get away from that. And in simple terms, basically, when we have these negative feelings, like regret, remorse, you know, uh, feeling lonely, that sort of a thing, we don't like these feelings. And what do we typically do when these feelings come up? We say no to the feelings, right? Like, oh, fear, regret, failure. I don't like you. I don't like how you feel. Get out of here. All right? Leave me alone. We say no to them, in essence. Now, when we say no to these negative feelings, does that make them go away? No. In fact, the more we say no to them, the bigger they seem to get. So let's do something different now, instead of saying no to that feeling. And this is what you could do in the moment, like you know, even if this feeling is just grabbing you and shaking you around, right? It's got total control of you. You could do this at any time, no matter how big the feeling is. Because guess what? It's right there in front of your face and you have a choice. You could say no to it or you could say yes to it. So right now, just take a look at that heavy feeling that gets stirred up when you think about the problem, either a problem that has happened or you're afraid that'll happen. And just look right at that feeling, that heaviness of, right? And just say yes to that feeling now. That's it. Just look right at that feeling and say yes to it. Why yes? Nice and simple. And say yes to that feeling a little bit more. And say yes to that feeling a little bit more. And say yes to it even 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 more. And basically by saying yes, you're allowing it to be there. Right? You're not needing to run away from it or get rid of it. You're just looking right at it. It's right, it's right there. You're just saying yes to it. That's all. So could you say yes to it a little bit more? And could you say yes to it a little bit more? And could you say yes to it even more? And could you say yes to it even more? And even more. And a little bit more. All right, now how does that feel? Just notice you feel a bit lighter. Notice that? Now, focus in on that feeling. If there's any left here in your stomach or chest, and wherever you feel it, you might feel it like right up here, high in your chest, or maybe down low in your gut, wherever that feeling is, wherever it's centralized right now, right in front of that feeling, open up a big imaginary window or door right in front of it. And imagine that feeling is just energy now moving out that door. And you can imagine it however you want. You can just see it as like water pouring out or smoke billowing out, whatever. 
But just let that feeling just go right on out that door. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. And even more. And notice how you feel now. Does that feel a little bit lighter? And notice how this is much more effective than trying to stuff that feeling back down, fighting with it, or trying to figure out how to make it go away. You just open up a door and release it. And now, here's a big difference. Take a look at that problem and see if that problem is as big as it was a few moments ago. Notice a difference. Notice if you feel a little bit bigger than that problem than you did a few moments ago. And speaking of that problem, right? If we could say yes to the feeling that gets stirred up by the problem, and then that feeling goes away, what if we do the exact same thing with the problem itself? Because notice what we tend to do with the problem when that problem shows up. We do the exact same thing that we do with our feelings. We say no to it. Oh, I don't want that problem. Make it go away. Let's fix that thing. But we're following our mind when we do that. And our mind, if we follow it, it leads us to making rash decisions. Right? We have no discrimination going on. And we just do something like... If I made a rash decision to run back into that relationship the way that I was, it would have been terrible. But when I got released, you know, things are better. And then I had the clarity to eventually realize, well, yeah, let's move on, right? And it wasn't a big deal. And with the trading, if I'm following my mind and I make a rash decision, I'm just going to make another mistake. But when I get nice and released, I have clarity, I have presence, and then I can make a smart decision from that place. So the point here is that mind isn't your friend. Stop following that thing. Release instead. And what's going to happen is you're going to take inspired action. Or you're going to see that whole problem just disappear. The whole thing just turn around right in front of your eyes. Just watch it. So take a look at that problem. And see if you've been saying no to that problem. No, I don't want that to happen to me. Now, the more you say no to it, you're actually pulling it right towards you. So let's do the opposite. Look at that problem now and just say yes to it. Say yes to whatever's going on. Try it. And say yes to it a little bit more. And say yes to it a little bit more. And say yes to it some more. And even more. Just say yes, that's it. And say yes to it a little bit more. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. And even more. And notice how you feel now. See if you have a little bit more clarity. Now what's happening here? You're feeling lighter, more clear. You're not listening to the mind so much. In fact, what you're starting to get access to is a part of you that's much bigger than that mind. It's something that Lester and the rest of us here that do this work, we call beingness. And this is a part of you that's way more intelligent than that mind that has answers for everything and can turn 
an awful situation around just from positivity. See, when we say no to something like a problem, it's like we have something that's negative, like this pile of negativity here, a problem. And when we say no to it, what are we doing? We're adding more negativity to it. It's like throwing a log on the fire. But when we take that negative situation, that negative energy, and we say yes to it, we're actually dissolving the whole thing. The whole problem disappears. And like I said, this is something that is practical and simple, even if you are just overwhelmed by feelings and the problem itself. You might not you know, do be able to kind of get into the more advanced releasing that we do, you know, with the questions that yeah, I can't quite, you know, get myself to do that yet because this problem you know, is just so big right now in the moment. I feel so, you know, run over by it. But what I can do, no matter how big it is and no matter how much it's pressing me, I can just look right at it. It's right in front of my face and I can just start saying yes to it. And that's it. That's what starts the process. And then you get lighter and lighter and then you can go into the deeper releasing to pull all the rest of that negativity out by the roots. So that's it. It's really simple. And once you practice this, it's just going to come in like an instinct. So instead of running away with your mind whenever a problem hits you, you're going to just start coming from a place of positivity and very quickly find yourself getting bigger than any problem and eventually get to a place where your life is free of problems. So if this is something that you really want to get good at and get to the place where your life is totally free of problems and you're living in a place of beingness. I invite you to join me for a new six week course that's starting here in April called Living Your True Purpose because it's really about discovering who you really are and living that way, making that your way of life, your lifestyle. Make it all about releasing, all about freedom rather than being a victim of your own mind and having that mind control you. This will really flip the table and put you in charge. So if this is something that's of interest to you, then I'll put a link to this new class, Living Your True Purpose, down in the description below. And it's a very powerful course. You're going to get to see just how free you can be.